What's the word, y'all? Kings fans, hey, the streak might be ending at 16. Let's overreact three weeks into the season because the Kings are over 500. Now, I have not done any research, but I'm, I'm about to say something and then go do it. This is the furthest along in the season where the Kings have been over 500 in seven years. All right, I'm going to go check it now. I'm going to go check it. That's, that's my prediction. But, I mean, has it been that bad? Over 500 through 14 games hasn't happened? We, oh, I'm legitimately looking it up. I'll be back. In 2018, the Sacramento Kings started off their season with a record of 7-6, and six, which is exactly where they sit at right now. And that season, oh, this is the year! Yo, okay, okay, okay. This was the year for the Sacramento Kings, in my personal opinion. The best year that they have had. And, and the 16-year drought this season right here was quite easily the best year. I got tweets from this season telling to the world, or maybe not tweets, but videos from this season telling to the world that this was my league pass team because, if I remember correctly, they had one of the highest paces in basketball. Dave Yeager had them boys running, and this was a year where De'Aaron Fox was hitting his three. Now, he, was, he wasn't shooting a lot of them. But man, this was a solid season. And if I'm not mistaken, they fit, yeah, they finished ninth. So if they ended up doing this now, they'd be in the play in. Uh, Dave Yeager was doing some good stuff over there. And then he got canned this season. And then Luke Walton came in and then set the organization back for X amount of years. But hey, it, it's it's looking good now. Now the real question is: do, do you consider the play-in? the playoffs if you the sacramento kings now i'm not putting their ceiling there sacramento fans i know you firing the laser and everything and i'm i'm happy for you uh but like hypothetically if they ended up in the nine th nine or ten or if they ended up seven or eight end up losing god forbid because we like this team would we be like they did it or would it be like better luck next you know what i'm saying like wh where do we draw the line because in my personal opinion making the play in but losing means you didn't make the playoffs you got a chance to get the first overall pick my, my boy you are in the lottery so um, i'm not saying that that is their ceiling but i think that is their floor that's how good i feel about the team and again i i talked about it when we were doing that western conference prediction i ain't got a lot of things right but me saying that the sacramento kings were at, would at least be a play-in team wasn't like a super hot take because i think a lot of people liked some of the things that they did this offseason and i like the kevin herder trade looks amazing now and i think i could be mistaken here but i think with that trade they kind of pigeonholed themselves as far as like what future draft capital they could trade but maybe that's for the better monty mcnear's been doing a pretty good job as a gm but i understand i know some organizations see the playoffs and like in view especially after a long drought and be like we'll be willing to give up an extra first round pick just to make it to the playoffs i.e chicago bulls you know what i'm saying uh so maybe the fact that they can't trade a, a near first round pick for a little minute is a good thing today they destroyed and i mean absolutely destroyed the brooklyn nets on national t V. Terrence Davis said, I don't know if it was his best game of his career, but one of his best games of his career. They put up 150 something points of regulation in the game where De'Aaron Fox didn't even hit 20. DeMont Sabonis didn't even hit 20. It was like a, a 15 man rotation and everybody was out there hooping. But really, it was TD and Kevin Herter. Red Velvet. Man, I really like that move for them. Kevin Herter shooting 51% from three on seven and a half attempts, which is crazy. I was going to say that he also had the highest plus minus on the night, but that's not true. DeMontis Sabonis in 28 minutes had a plus minus of 44. 44. When he was on the court, they outscored the Brooklyn Nets by 44. And a lot of that was that, that second quarter um, going up on a huge run and then continuing that run come third quarter. And Mike Brown had the idea right. Basically, the same thing that every team has been doing to Brooklyn Nets in the last couple weeks is throw whatever you can at Kevin Durant and make everybody else around them beat us. And then we get Royce O'Neal one for four. Uh, Joe Harris one for seven. I think the one he hit, they was already down by 30 points by the time he hit it. So, like, nobody was able to capitalize on Kevin Durant getting double teamed and everything. And the Sacramento Kings are above 500. And it's just, in my opinion, one of the better stories in basketball right now because they are so fun and they've been extremely likable i mean the king's fans it's easy to root for the kings because king's fans have been through so much that like you would expect them after a win like this to be going crazy trash talking i'm on, i went to king's twitter and they were saying like ggs to the brooklyn nets fans 
We, you, you beat them by 50 on national TV, basically. The final score wasn't that. But you beat them by 50 on national TV, but they understand that they haven't been in this moment, so they can't really be doing it. You know, they can't be out there acting crazy. And they not. They try to, they stay humble because they know in the blink of an eye, things can change. Because they haven't Kings fans for the last like, 16 years or so. But oh, other than that, super fun game, um, especially if, you, if you're a Kings fan. Let's talk about the other games of the day. The first nationally televised game was Grizzlies versus Pelicans. And a game where the Pelicans came out and did their thing. I was excited about this one because CJ McCollum finally got out of his slump. Because so far this season, shooting the ball wise, CJ had been awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, like people on Twitter are wondering what's going on. I think he was he's dealing with some type of finger injury on his shooting hand. He had never used it as an excuse. But it, you could tell it's definitely bothering him. You've never really seen CJ McCollum start off a season this bad. And maybe this was the break in, in the whole thing. And now he's going to be a lot better. I mean, these two teams, there was no Zion Williamson. Lay scratching this one, which sucks because it's a nasty televised game. You want to see Ja versus Zion. Even when Zion not there, these two teams were built to be nasty televised not necessarily they have to go against each other every day but like you know the Grizzlies are a nationally televised team because John ja Morant is so electric and then you also had like Trey Murphy catching the body Larry Nance catching the body Jose Alvarado saying that John ja Morant too small and John ja Morant coming back and saying no you too small these teams are built for nationally televised games which is great but I think the 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 NBA decided to put the Pels on national TV less than last season and last season there was times where like the pelicans were on national tv with no zion and i was like oh here we go again and he wasn't there today but it was a good game and they got a good win out of out of it it was cool to see both teams go uh, pretty pretty small down the stretch um because that's the way basketball is going especially if you're starting center steven adams who's been really good up until this point and then Jonas valentunas who's hit and miss you don't need those dudes on the floor especially if larry nance is hitting however many threes he hit and dunking on people and then when the grizzlies having uh jaren back which is a good story uh they can afford to go small and it was two it was a good game really good game the mavericks need to figure out a way to play good basketball after halftime i don't know the numbers of actually i can find these numbers i bet i'll be back so these numbers are a few days old. Um, so according to NBA.com, when it comes to the third quarter, the net rating of the Dallas Mavericks is negative 4.7. And the fourth quarter is negative 3.5. So in the second half in general, uh, they've been really, really, they've been bad. Okay, I can't say really, really bad because this right here, <laughs> this number right here is what we consider to be really, really bad come fourth quarter time. Um, is that by design? Maybe. Oh, look at this. That's promise you this team wasn't built to do that anyway when you compare it to their first first quarter numbers i mean those numbers are dramatically different because in the first quarter they're the third best team in basketball according to their net rating and the second quarter they are third we have to see the lakers here lakers a great second quarter team mm, good to know so basically the dallas mavericks give you a black eye in the first half and the second half they just taking punches to the face and it always leads up to like a really close game where luca has to hit some crazy shot which he did today i don't even know how that shot goes in and they ended up winning the bright side about this win if you're a dallas mavericks fan though even though you gave up that big first half lead doran finney smith woke up hit some threes and reggie bullock might be out of his uh beginning of season slump that he always starts off with so you actually got three-point production from people that you expect to get three-point production from so that's a good thing and you hope that that carries over the knicks held a players only meeting where julius randall being the captain that he is brought everybody together no tom thibodeau no other people on the staff that i don't know the names of uh and just let the players do the thing and guess what they beat the jazz i might have jinxed the jazz yep because i i think this is about to be the turning point not saying that they about to be completely terrible but i mean first of all we all knew that they wasn't a 10 3 10 and 3 material you can see they roster they was a 10 and 3 material all right but uh boy oh boy the laurie market and drop down to earth is happening um and you know what? Some Bulls fans saw happen. And it's not like he's he was not bad by any means. Do not do not try to stretch these words. He was not bad, but he just wasn't all-star good. Um, and some Bulls fans kind of saw it coming. And I'm only talking basically for the last three games or so. But Bulls fans, we went through a month where Larry Markin averaged like 26, 10, and whatever for us, and then he fell back down. I'm just saying, whatever. Well, let's focus on the Knicks because they won this game. Oh, my God. The Portland Trailblazers won against the San Antonio Spurs in the game when Yaka Pertle had 31 points. Is that his career high? Yaka Pertle career high, 
today. 31 points. Yeah, okay. I didn't have to look that up. I don't I just feel like I've never seen Yaka Purdue get a 30 piece. He did it today. Um, it was it was at points very embarrassing for Yusuf Nurkic to have Yaka basically walking to the basket and just tearing him up defensively. Don't matter. Don't matter if you get the win. And they got the win. Um, Damian, no, no, no. Anthony Simons with a really clutch shot down the stretch. But I think we need to shine a huge light on Jeremy Grant because he's found his home. He's found his place. Because, like, okay, so he was in Denver, and he was, like, the ultimate role player. And he said, hey, I want to go to Detroit because I want a bigger role. He bet on himself, which we, we see to some extent. But I remember when he signed to the Detroit Pistons, a lot, of, a lot of people, me included, was like, I mean, get your bag, fella, but you ain't really about to be out there doing that, are you? And it came, it came out that um, he was pretty damn good. Not good enough to be your number one, but we can see that he can score in bunches. And now he ends up in Portland, and it is a similar situation to what he wanted. He wanted to go experiment and see what he could do, what he could get in his bag. He did that. But he also went to Detroit because he wanted to play under a black coach and Dwayne Casey. And now he's playing on a better team where he could still get his 29 piece off, still get his 37 piece off a couple games before. And he's playing under a black coach and Chauncey Billups. And he's playing very crucial, very great minutes for one of the better teams of basketball at this point. So shout out to Jeremy Grant, man. He's been doing his thing. The only thing that I didn't like about this game is if, okay, so I ranked the jerseys and the the trailblazers have that pdx jersey where it's not i don't even know what color you want to call it it's like is it aqua I don't, I don't know i failed art and you can probably see why um but i expected them to change their court accordingly like every other team has a different court with their jerseys and portland just kept the same red motor center jersey or the court with the jersey and it just it was eerie to watch didn't love it they got the win though. They're 10 and 4 on the season. And uh again, big old shots down the stretch from Anthony Simon. For real. There's a 10-game slate tomorrow. And I got my eye. I got my eye on two different teams. Um, actually, one of them in the very positive note and one of them in the very negative note. And and depending on what happens in these two games with these two teams is going to determine what type of energy we come with with tomorrow's video i'm not telling you what those teams are i'm not telling you what those teams are but i'm saying there are two teams one in the very positive one in the very negative and we're gonna see how it unfolds man if you enjoy leave it a like um thank y'all so much for y'all that showed support and bought the kenny beecham um hoa chicago bulls collaboration we sold out of the bomber jacket in less than 24 hours which is crazy there's still t-shirts i'll put a link in the description i think the t-shirts are gonna be on sale for as far as y'all buy them for the first week and then they become limited um so buy up man no limit on that but there is a limit on the sweatpants and there was a limit on the bomber as you saw so appreciate y'all